friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Got another little challenge in this morning, and uh, this one, in one way it's a huge challenge, in another way it's not a big deal. Um, the customer called me from Fort Leonard Wood. Uh, that's not very far from here. Fort Leonard Wood's only about 12 miles from here. I'm ex almost exactly halfway between Fort Leonard Wood and Rolla, Missouri. Um, anyway, I do get some business from the Ford every now and again, and getting more and more as the word actually gets out. I've never advertised over there or anything, but it's starting to spread a little bit. <clears throat> this uh, customer called me and said, the intonation on this bass guitar is absolutely terrible. He says, it's unplayable. And... Uh, he said, I just ha I had it at a music store, and I'm not going to name the music store. It, it's in the general area, but it's a little further away. And um, anyway, he said they, they did a setup on it, and uh, the setup is pretty good, he said. But he said, there's a couple things about that I don't like either. He said, they put shims under the saddle uh, and things like that. He said, and they said that they could not improve the intonation. And I said, well, I haven't seen it, obviously, but bring it here and I'll see what I can do with it. I, I kind of think I can fix it. You know, most, almost anything's fixable. I mean, it just depends on whether it's worth fixing, you know, or that kind of thing is usually what my limit is. I said, bring it up here. We'll take a look at it. So anyway, he brought it here. It's an Ibanez bass, uh, acoustic bass guitar. I guess you, maybe it's acoustic electric, I guess. Yeah, it is. Um... And anyway, there's the peg head on it. Nice, nice looking bass, uh, bass guitar. And uh, it's got, I can tell already, it's got a plastic saddle. And it's an oddly made plastic saddle. I've never seen one like it myself. Uh, it comes, I'm just trying to show you, it comes straight up and then it goes back. <laughs> it's like an L. So the L, the long part of the L is stuck down in here and then the short part of the L goes toward the back of the guitar. Well, anyway, that's plastic, and there's not much I can do with that. Um, knowing that it's already been shimmed under there, too, to make the action right, I told the customer, I said, well, when we get done with it, we're going to put a deer antler saddle in here. I said, uh, we will not shim it. It will be exactly the right size. So what we'll do is we'll measure the saddle with the shims, and we'll make a saddle that size uh, without the shims. But what really needs to be done, I checked the intonation, and the customer's absolutely right. In my opinion, it is unplayable. He said, he said, well, the G-string, you know, the customer, and, I, and I'm not making fun of the customer. The customer says, well, the G-string's okay. He says, I can play that one. That one's okay. Well, I checked the G-string, and it is the best one. He's right. <laughs> it's 20 cents out. That's, that's the best one. So the rest of them are much worse than that. So you're talking 20% off on the best one. So, so we will fix it all. And, um, you know, will I, I told him, I said, I'm not 100% sure I'll get it 100%. I said, I can improve it significantly where, you know, we, I, I think we can get it pretty darn close. I, Okay, what the real problem is, whenever you have the intonation that far off, I don't care if it's a guitar or a mandolin, a fiddle, or whatever you want to call it, if the intonation is off, then the bridge is in the wrong place. I mean, that's really the bottom line. And you can sugarcoat it, and you can come up with all kinds of other reasons, but it's the bridge is in the wrong place. What they do when they build instruments is that they, they, have, a, they have a pattern and they and they build it to that scale and you know probably 95 percent of the time that scale works perfectly for some reason it doesn't work on this particular guitar or more than likely they probably didn't get the bridge exactly where it should have been they probably let it slip a little bit and move forward or something like that but anyway regardless the bridge is in the wrong place so there's two ways to fix that one way is to take the bridge completely off and move it back and uh, you've seen my floating bridge technique where I could hook the strings up to the back of the guitar back here and float the bridge under here and move it until I got the intonation perfectly but the problem with that is that it leaves a big scar especially in the front here if, if we have to move the bridge back well then there's going to be a big looking scar in front of the bridge up here that's one good option I mean that's the best way to get the bridge exactly right 
But in this particular case, I think what we're going to try to do, and I may regret this, is I think I'm going to widen the saddle slot. I'm going to make the saddle slot wider toward the back. I'm going to put a much wider saddle in it. Well, actually, it won't be a whole lot wider than the saddle that's here. Like I told you, they've got an L-shaped saddle here. You know, the top, the bottom of the saddle is actually fairly skinny. The top is much wider. So what I'm going to do is make a slot that's probably about the width of the top, maybe even a hair wider, and that'll give me room to make adjustments in the saddle to move the string back that way. In other words, I'll file the front of the saddle off, which I don't like to do, but you know, it it's just needs to be done. I mean, there's not too many options. But that's the practical way to fix this, I believe. The negative of that is, I, if I don't get enough width in the saddle, I won't be able to make enough adjustment. Also, you can't really undo it. Once you do it, well, I guess you could. You could always refill the slot with some ebony or something. But the bottom line is, it's not right the way it is. And, and I usually generally think of those kinds of things as, you know, how bad can it get? I mean, it's already really bad. I mean, I, surely I'm going to improve it some. So. So here we go. I have the strings removed on this uh, Ibanez bass guitar. Here's the saddle. I'll show you a close-up of this saddle so you can see what I'm talking about. See how it's made like an L on the end there. The short piece coming across the top. Never really seen one made that way before. Here's the shim that's in there too. If I can get it out. Yeah, they put two pieces of paper under it. And, you know, really what that does it's kind of like, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but it's kind of like putting carpet under your saddle. The sound is being transferred through the saddle, vibration, and then it gets dampened right here, and then it tries to go on through, you know. So you're just losing a lot of your sound right here. Uh, with, so, you know, in my opinion, if you've got a saddle that's shimmed, it's not good. So it could be worse, I guess, but, but, the material you shim it with would make a lot of difference too. This is paper, and paper is not a good shimming material for this. Then there is a pickup in here. Um, I'm reaching in there. The pickup is, uh, it kind of also deadens the sound, in my opinion, when you're playing acoustically. Obviously, when you're playing electrically, the pickup is a good thing. Um, this is not good. I didn't think about this. Um, I'm going to have to take this pickup out. Hopefully it will come out easy uh, so that I can move this uh, back. That really kind of poses a problem I hadn't thought of. The, uh, this pickup is in a slot here and it doesn't move right now. What I may do, and I, I probably will do, is when I cut the new slot I will probably leave it slightly higher so that it's basically level with this pickup. Actually, I'll make it just slightly, just very, very slightly below the level of the pickup so that the saddle will sit on the pickup and on the new part of the slot back here. That's the best I can think of right now. I may change my mind on that as I do this, but right now that's what it sounds like I'll have to do. Because if I just widen the slot, then this then that will leave this pickup in here to float like this and I don't want the pickup floating, I want it to stay in one place. Um, if it was floating under there, it would the saddle would be rocking like this and so I want to hold it in one place and right now that's the best I can come up with. It's not easy being me. Just thought I'd show you before I take this out, it looks like the saddle will slide down in there. I was wanting, I didn't know if it was going to come out this way or the other way and there's an, this, this uh, hole is drilled at an angle and so the saddle slides out at an angle here so we're kind of in luck there so the, we're pulling the uh, I mean the pickup not the saddle the pickup pulls out at an angle so we're kind of in luck there uh, at least uh, that came out fairly easy without any problems so now I'm going to do uh, put the old thinking cap on here and decide how I'm going to cut this out obviously I've got my jig that I can put on here and route this out but I want to think about it a little bit, make sure I don't uh, regret what I, what I do. Okay, we have a very elaborate setup here. It's a, a tough setup uh, for a lot of reasons. I had to put the, uh, the base of this wasn't big enough to reach across it that direction. It's hard to explain. Anyway, I had to put the, uh, 
this big brace in the front this time, or this big uh, guide in front this time, and this behind. Um, this bridge is a lot wider than normal, so the bridge is just the uh, base of this router is just barely riding on the other base back here. So I've got it set in there. It's a lot harder to set this up than you might think, where it just basically drags all the way across that back line right now. Uh, it, it, you can feel a slight drag on it all the way. And I guess here's another one of those things. Don't try this at home. Because this will either turn out great or or not, <laughs> as they say. So here we go. We're going to turn it on. And, and this really won't even hardly cut anything on this first uh, pass. Okay, I know you can't really see that very good, but you're not alone. I can't see it very good either. <sighs> Actually, that worked pretty darn good. I can't tell how deep I am very easily here. To the best of my measuring ability, I've taken my depth probe on my calipers and I measured the deepest part of the slot and it comes out to almost exactly 300 thousandths. The depth of the new slot that I'm cutting, and I've only got just a little, literally a hairline there to even measure on, is almost exactly 200 thousandths. That leaves me about a hundred thousandths below. So I've got a hundred thousandths down below. I'm going to try to reach in here and grab this pickup if I can get it out where it'll come out in this hole. It's probably wired in there so tight that it won't come out this far. Well, heck, I'll just poke it up through one of these holes. That's good enough. It doesn't really matter. All I got to do is measure it. Don't want to bend these things too much because they break. All right, so it's going to be sitting in there like this. And that measures, it's a sad thing that it doesn't measure 100 thousandths. It only measures 81 thousandths. So I need to make the slot at least 20 thousandths deeper and probably a little bit more than that. I'll do some fine adjustment on this and uh, we'll be back to you. After the most precise measurement I could possibly make, I, uh, I mean, I, I, it just, it's very difficult to move this in and out. It just slides in and out. So I moved it 25 thousandths, the best I can figure. That would be just about right. So we're going to cut the slot 25 thousandths deeper, and then we'll shim it and go back. Okay. That looks like the mission was accomplished there. We'll try now to measure them again and see what we're at. Um, the deepest part obviously should still be about the same. It's pretty close to 300 thousandths. Right on the money it shows. Now we'll check the new ridge depth so I can get it to catch on there. That's very narrow little lip. It shows it 240 thousandths on that first measurement, which I'm not sure was very good. Yeah, still showing 240, 230. So we're just going to go with that. I think that's going to work. It leaves a little bit of a lip down in there for the for that other part to ride in the um, pickup. Now we're going to put this uh, shim on here. And we're going to shim it back a little bit and see how that goes and see how wide we are. This shim may not be wide enough, but I'm sure it's good for, for a starter. So we're going to start with that anyway. This is going to be a tricky cut now because I'll be cutting a whole lot with this bit. And I'm a little concerned about it to be perfectly honest with you. That is not easy. I can tell you for sure that is not easy. For some reason it seemed to be cutting more on this end than on this end. I'm not sure why that is. 
Okay, it's 165 thousandths there. And it's 166 thousandths down there. So we're talking a thousandth of an inch, and that's probably in the measuring. So it looks like it's right. I'm going to try to move the whole fence just a fraction of an inch that way so that I can cut just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount more. I'm going to do that by sharpening a pencil really, really sharp, making a very fine line across there, and then moving the fence to that line. Okay, now I'm just going to try to move the fence just a little bit to cover up that line. Okay, let's see if that worked. I hope it did. Well, that's as good as it's going to get. It's, uh, I would say, approximately twice as wide as it used to be. And that's probably what it needs, every bit of that, so that we can set the intonation better. I believe I've showed this before in other videos, but these feet on this, uh, on this uh, jig that I made um, are very soft spongy foam. Uh, you can crush them in and so they, they and they're rubbery so they stick they don't slide. That's the perfect material for the bottom of this. It doesn't scratch and it holds holds the whole thing up off the guitar so it doesn't scratch the instrument and this keeps it from sliding but they're also very spongy soft so works out real good. I've got it on both of them and it works works really really well. Well, the first challenge is met. Uh, at least it seems to be, in my opinion. We've got the slot widened out, and we left it a little bit shallower behind where the pickup goes so that the pickup will stay where it was. The challenge now is to figure out how to make a decent saddle to fit this kind of a slot. Um, first of all, it's, uh, you know, we've got the shim under here that we have to take into account. So we want to make it you know, the same size as this and maybe just a hair bigger even. Because I think he said that the one string was a hair low. So, we're not going to go any smaller than this, let's put it that way. And I've never done one quite like this before, but this is the best I can come up with, uh, with the pickup in there. If there was no pickup, this is a piece of cake, no problem. So here we go, and plus we have to make it wide enough to fit this new wide slot. So we're going to go into the other part of the shop now and manufacture this. One of the biggest challenges with this type of uh, manufacturing is finding a piece of antler straight enough and thick enough to make something this thick out of. Uh, actually the antler is, is kind of thin, uh, the inside is hollow or not hollow but it's porous. Um, so right across here is a fairly flat long place so I'm just basically thinking that I'll get it right out of this flat spot here um, so I'm going to cut it plenty long you just got to cut it off first now you can see this particular antler is, is, is fairly solid, but that darker area is the most solid part. Then it starts to get porous as the deeper you go into it. Okay, the first thing I have to do with this is to flatten it off. So, I, so I'm going to rub it on here and try to get a, a good long flat area established. Well, it's not completely flat across there. I'm going to stop at that point because it's starting to become flat. And then I'm going to cut a nice, long, thick piece out of this. I have taken this flat spot, laid it on my belt or on my disc sander, 
table and slid it into the disc so that it cut a, a 90 between here and here. Now I can take that little tiny flat area and lay it down and run it through the bandsaw and cut a nice wide area through here. I've made this probably a hundred thousandths wider than I need it. That looks like a nice piece that we can work with. It's, uh, it starts to get a little porous down in this area, but up the, this front part here, which is where we'll get most of this out of, um, looks like we can get a lot of solid out of this area. So I think we'll be just fine with this. Now we'll cut it to some, somewhat to length. That's mainly just to have square ends on it so I can push it through my other sander. The saddle is almost fitting in there perfectly. It'll, it'll almost start down in there, so I'm going to take just a couple more thousandths off of it. That'll probably do it, but I might have to take a little more. You just never know. I have the saddle laying on the deer antler piece, and I have the little shims under there so that I can draw this to scale with the shims and just trying to get it roughly penciled in without it moving and uh, that looks like that's the definition of rough but anyway it worked so We'll cut that out and leave it a little leave it a little bit large. Alright, I'm tapering the front side of this saddle back pretty steep so that it'll be riding on the back edge of the saddle and it won't buzz off the front edge. Hopefully you can see that that fits that like a glove. I mean, it, there's no play in it whatsoever. Now, my only concern is that that edge is a little skinny for a bass string, that it might cause a bass string to break, possibly, but I don't think so. Deer antler is actually pretty forgiving on the strings. As a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons I use it on my mandolins, is I don't break the strings. But it is a pretty narrow edge compared to what it used to have. going to file it a little bit more off the top here to smooth this top out. I'm just going to draw file it like with this fine deal here to get rid of any roughness. I want it to be feel feel really smooth. Feels pretty good. I'm going to even touch it with a little bit of sandpaper. Here's a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to just touch it just so that it's really smooth and it won't grab the string at all. Anyway, I moved it back to the back edge here as far as I could really afford to go. We'll just have to see if it made a difference. Let's see if we can get the pickup back through there, which will be a real challenge through that little tiny hole. We made it. Yeah. 
if we can just get it up to back where it was. I believe that's where it was. Okay, that looks good. Hopefully, action-wise, it'll be pretty close. On this end of the nut, this is uh, really catching the base string tight. I mean, it's tight. So, I'm going to take a risk here. I hate doing this, but I'm going to take a risk because that's way too tight. And I'm going to widen the slot just a little bit. Now, keep in mind, he paid to have this fixed up here at the music store. I got to believe that this is going to be too low. This is really cut low here, lower than all the rest of them. And I have a feeling now that I'm widening it out, it's going to bottom out and probably buzz, which would be my luck since I didn't create the problem. But it's got to be wider than that because it just, now that, now there, there's the right fit right there. It fits exactly snug, but it slides through. I just hope it doesn't buzz. The strings were wound up the post, which is not a good thing, so I'm winding them where they go down the post. Don't like to see things done the wrong way. only about 10 cents sharp now so that improved it by about 10 cents. I'm afraid that's about all we're going to get out of all of it. Well the D's only 10 cents sharp. That's, I mean we're talking a huge improvement on the D because the D was probably 30 or more cents sharp. There's the A. The A's are almost on the money. It's 5 cents maybe. 5 to 10. Here's the E. It's 8 cents sharp now. All of these were well over 20, per, uh, 20 cents sharp. So this is much, much better. Is it perfect? No, but it's, you know, when you're trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, this is pretty good. like eight, it's five to eight. There's the D. It's about five. There's the A. It's about eight. There's the uh, E, although it's not registering on the It's a little bit more sharp yet. It's about 15. Let me make sure it's in tune. Yeah, it's more like 15 to 18. So it's still pretty sharp. is about the same. Well, these three here are about five to eight cents sharp, which considering the best one was 20 cents sharp and these were over 30 cents sharp, that's really good compared to where they were. These two are still about 15 to 18 cents sharp. They're not quite 20 cents sharp. 
So if I could file this back just a little bit more, we'd have a, you know quite a bit of an improvement right here. So I'm going to try to file these back against my better judgment. I'm going to try to file them back that way just a little bit more. I don't have much to work with at this point. So I can't do too much, but I'll do a little bit. Well, in that ever lasting struggle for perfection, we're going to try to go this, bring this back just a little bit more. Can't really do very much more. It's just the way it is, but I can maybe get another five cents out of it or something here. I'll try hard. all stand to come back a little bit so I'm just going to try to do a little bit of filing on each one of them. You can definitely see I've got these back a little further than the other two, than the other three I should say. These two are a little bit further back than the rest of these but I'm taking them all back a little bit more since, since I've got it out of there. Might as well do it a little bit if I can gain just another cent or two it'll even be that much better. Probably better quit. You gotta know when to quit. I'm getting getting to that point where I think I better quit. Again, I'm just trying to smooth it off so it won't bite into the string. And the pickup's going back down in that little slot that I left for it. So that worked out really good actually, the pickup deal. Worked out better than I thought it was going to. Alright, here's the G. It's only about two or three cents sharp now. That's pretty good. Here's the D. It's about three or four cents sharp. Here's the A. bouncing between perfect and five so almost perfect it looks like okay here's the E okay it's eight cents now that's much better almost 20 cents sharp still so that one's still almost 20 cents sharp. Keep in mind the best one was 20 cents sharp. That was the best. The rest of these were far worse. So now the worst one is almost 20 cents sharp. Actually it, it bounces a lot. It's really hard to tell. It could just be my tuner. It may be better than that because sometimes it shows real good. I'm going to call it pretty good. I'm going to call it more like 10 cents, really, because uh, it's hard to tell with that tuner, but when I get it just dialed in, it looks like it's pretty close. But it jumps up to 20 sometimes, so I, I can't hardly say for, for a fact that that's right. But Well, I can't really say that we absolutely reached perfection, but I can say we really improved it. Um, I mean, when the best string was 20 cents sharp, and now the worst string is approximately 10 to maybe 15 cents sharp. Um, that's the worst. And it, and it even fluctuates on that one. I'm not 100% sure that it's that far off. And if you can see this saddle, it's probably pretty hard to see, but you can see that it's angled way steep back to where it, their strings are riding on the very back of the saddle now. And uh, that's the best I could do under the circumstances. We interrupt this video to let you know that the customer is not happy. Bummer. In fact, the customer said that he doesn't think there's been any improvement at all. Well, I'm a firm believer that the customer is always right, except in this case. I, you know, to make the statement it's not improved at all is absolutely wrong. Um, is it perfect? No, it probably isn't perfect. I was having trouble with my tuner picking up these low notes. Um, 
So what my reply to the customer was when he called back, basically he called back as I was editing this video, where you see me stop the video, that's when he called back. I told him my exact words were, don't worry, I'll fix it. I, you know, I, I want him to be happy. I, you know, you, you can't please everybody, but you have to try in this business or you don't have a business. So, you know, I have a hundred percent guarantee on all my work that if you're not happy, bring it back. There's no charge. Yeah, I know it's a hassle. And especially if you're out of state, you have to ship it back. But if you have to ship it back, I pay shipping both ways. So, you know, you're not out anything. It's just the time and the hassle. I understand that. And it is a hassle. But uh, I try to do my best. And every once in a while, you're going to run into a problem. Well, on this particular instrument, I already showed in the video that I was having trouble picking up these top two bass strings. Well, he, his tuner, he plugged it in, which I didn't think to do that. I don't work on very many electrical instruments, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, I still should have thought to do that, but I didn't. So when I plug it in, it does pick up quite a bit better. So let's take a look and see where we're at. Well, hopefully you can see the tuner there. Now keep in mind, this G string was the best string on it before I started, and it was 20 cents off. I like to try to get it as precise as I can when I check it. Okay, now, see it's about five, five cents off or even less. So certainly there's been improvement. Okay, the next string is the D. Okay, it is pretty close to center. It's about two to five cents off also. It's definitely below 10. So that's a huge improvement because that one was at least 30 off. All right, so here we go. Here's the A. Okay, now the A is starting to show a little bit more deviation now that it's plugged in. It's showing 10 to 12 to bounce to 15. It's kind of holding about 10. So it's quite a bit more off. All right, now we're going to the E. Hard to get the E to be stable here. It's pretty close to center right there. And it's about 10 to 12 cents off. So that's a huge improvement on the even on these heavy ones because they were way, way off. They were off the charts off. And that one's about 10 cents off also. So the top three are still off, you know, uh, more than I would like. So what I'm going to do, I mean, you know, I can only do so much here. I, I hate to cut the slot any further back this way. If I cut the slot further back, number one, you're getting real close to the pins. Number two, you're getting further away from the front edge of the uh, contact with the pickup. So there's problems with cutting it back further. Um, I have an idea, and we're going to give it a shot here. I have a piece of antler that what I'm going to do is cut it to fit really well right behind this, um, right behind this saddle, and uh, we will glue it up to this saddle here, attach it to it, and then I can further uh, angle this back a little bit more for these top three strings, and that should help them a lot. These two strings, I can still taper back just a fraction more. They're only about two cents sharp anyway, but I'll taper them back just a little bit more, and I think we can fix those two. But these three, I don't think they're fixable as they are, so we will have to put something behind here so that we can move it back a little bit further. I want to give you a close-up view of what I'm actually doing. This piece of antler is about, oh, 200 thousandths thick. I didn't measure it, but my, 
I don't know. Let's just check it and see. I may be way off. Uh, 172 thousandths thick. Okay, so what I did was on the bottom of it, I cut, I traced the radius of this bridge. This bridge is not flat. It has got a radius in it. So I traced the radius on the bottom of this piece, and it sits on the bridge perfectly flat now. Okay, what I'm going to do, and it and it matches up with the back of this perfectly square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to profile it so that it just doesn't look like a big clunk piece of junk sitting on there. Uh, I'm going to taper it down to this other string here because this other string's okay. So I'm going to I'm going to basically taper it down, but I have to leave it thick enough here so I can graduate it for this for the third string. Um, and again, I'll taper it off to meet this end of the uh, saddle, um, but I have to leave it thick enough to, you know, to, to uh, taper it back for the uh, fifth string also. I'm going to trace the profile on, of the saddle now on the front of this, and we're going to cut it to fit this exactly. Okay, to the best of my ability, this piece of antler fits behind this saddle perfectly. It's sitting perfectly on the top of the bridge so that it should make full contact. Um, it matches up to the back of the saddle really good. There doesn't look like there's going to be much of a seam. And I have the ends tapered around to match up with the saddle and I have it tapered down here to, so that it won't be in the way of this other string. So that's a uh, about as good as I can do. That's the only thing I can come up with that will make any sense to move these strings back further. I think it's really important to say this, even though it's probably obvious to most of you. Most of you. Obviously, I didn't create this problem. This bridge is in the wrong place. That's the bottom line. Now, you might say, well, then why don't you just move the bridge? Well, here's the reason I did not move the bridge. See how large these holes are? They're giant. So if I had to move this bridge back um, a quarter of an inch, then we just have great big long channel holes in, in these in these where these pins go through. That would just weaken the top that much more. Plus, you'd have a, a quarter inch scar across the front here. So you know, moving the bridge just wasn't a real good option in this particular case. On a regular guitar, I have moved the bridge. I have also fixed regular guitars this exact same way. They sound perfect. So in other words, this is not my first rodeo doing this. Um, they sound fine. They play good. The intonation's good on them that way. So this does work. It's, it's, I don't know. I've, I've never seen anybody else do this technique before. Um, I'm sure somebody else has done it. I doubt I'm the first one to think of it. But uh, anyway, that's this is how I'm going to fix it. And I am pretty positive we can make the customer 100% happy by doing it this way. So now I've got to remove... Well, first of all, what I'm going to try to do is glue this saddle to this other saddle without getting glue on the top of the bridge. Now that's another tricky problem here. Because that uh, CA glue, it runs everywhere. But that's about the only thing that will stick this tight enough uh, so I have to use that, but uh, it's a real tricky operation here. I really do not want to get the CA glue down in the, in the bridge. All right, what I'm doing is I'm putting a piece of tape, regular just cellophane type tape, um, really that's really thin tape, and I'm putting that on there first so that, you know, the, the uh, CA glue will be less likely to stick to the top of this. Now it may still go down in the slot a little bit, but I've got the tape right against the saddle the best I can to try to keep that from happening. Here we go. I put a little CA glue right down the saddle. I'm just putting a long, thin stripe of it right down the saddle. And then I'm going to move it into position here. And it stuck almost instantly. <laughs> Golly, it stuck fast. Um, that stuff does stick to this bone really good. I've tried it before. It, it really sticks good. That part you don't have to worry about. It's stuck. Okay. We got her out of there so we didn't have any problem with the glue getting down in the joint. So it's stuck real good and tight. I'm going to do a lot of profiling now to clean this up and make it look good. Okay, let's check the tuner. This is the customer's tuner, so let's see what it shows. Okay, there's the G, open. Pretty much right in the dead center. 
here's the D open pretty much right in the dead center here's the A open between center and five There's the E. It's all over the place really, but it shows between five and ten cents sharp mostly on E. Here's the low B is showing between center and five to ten I have to say that that's about as good as I can do I mean you got to look at this particular custom-made saddle and realize that it's back about as far as we can go I mean we can go maybe a hair more but doggone the string is coming almost straight out of the hole now so there's not much more we can do to it in my opinion I hope you're satisfied with that because I really do want to please the customer Hope you've enjoyed this, um, but I did want to be honest with you and let you know that the customer wasn't happy and uh, we try to do our best on it.